Welcome to worship at Mount Calvary. Life is filled with difficulties. The Lord helps us through those difficult times. Eventually it will take us to heaven, but there are only happy times. We're going to be seeing a video about a family that has some very difficult times. Um, we're going to view the Wells Connection, and after that we'll sing the first hymn. Or to 
cancer prayer you maybe didn't even know you had. And so we got the van. I mean, within six weeks, the pastor was like, here you go. We've got this. We're going to help you. It was the Lord who held them up. And it was his strength that carried them through. And they regularly confessed that. And that was beautiful. It's just so humbling. People who we have never met, never will meet here on earth, who were willing to help Landon and help us do the things that are most important is still to be able to travel together. And um, ultimately, it's to go back and have Landon worship his Savior in, in church. To see the relief. And I think that's what Christianity and relief is all about. Giving them the relief that they're not alone and that they have others they can count on. Landon's story is a beautiful illustration how Wells Christian Aid and Relief offers opportunities to demonstrate our Christian love. Whether it's a natural disaster, or a need at one of our world missions, or a family that's hurting, Wells Christian Aid and Relief is there as a way to show love to our neighbor, reflecting the great love Jesus has shown us. Thank you. 
chapter 9, and Paul preached the gospel to many different people in many different areas, and tried to be all things to all men, so he might more may effectively preach that gospel. You see, if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about, because an obligation is laid on me. It won't to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I do this as a volunteer, I receive compensation. But if not, I have been entrusted with the responsibility as a steward. What then is my compensation? To present the gospel of Christ free of charge when I preach it, so that I can use the right that I have when I preach the gospel. In fact, although I am free from all, I enslave myself to all, so that I might gain many more. For the Jews, I became like a Jew, so that I might gain Jews. For those who are under the law, I became like a person under the law. For I myself am not under the law, so that I might gain those who are under the law. For those who are without the law, I became like a person without the law, though I am not without God's law, but I'm within the law of Christ. So that I might gain those who are without the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might gain the weak. I become all things to all people, so that I might save some, at least some. I do everything for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in it along with others. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm is Psalm 103. We'll sing the refrain, and I'll read the actual verses of the psalm.
praying there. Simon and his companions searched for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let's go somewhere else, to the neighboring villages, so they can preach there too. That, that is why I have come. And he went throughout the whole region of Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out the demons. Here ends the gospel lesson. We'll read together the seasonal response of this printer. We, we have seen, seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Be seated for the next hymn, Be Still My Soul, verses 1 and 2. still my soul, the Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In at last be still my soul the waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he lived below grace be unto you with peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen. Our scripture lesson for our meditation this evening is from Job, chapter 7, the first seven verses. Isn't man's time on earth like being compelled to serve in the army? Are his days like those of a hired man? Like a slave, he longs for shade. Or like a day laborer, he waits for his pay. In the same way, I've been a lot of months of futility. Nights of agony have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? But the night drags on, and I am filled with restlessness until dawn. My flesh is clothed with maggots, and caked with dirt. My skin scabs over, and then oozes again. My days pass by more swiftly than the shuttle of a weaver's loom. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is just a breath. My eyes will never again see good fortune. This is the word of God. Dear friends in Christ, who is our Lord and Savior? Life is full of disappointments. Expectations are not always realized. Things happen, often in ways we had not planned or maybe in ways that we don't really like. And that's not unusual. And so we might be able, inclined to say, that's life. <clears throat> we can often apply that to things that are less than ideal. <clears throat> that's life. 
we know this life is never going to be perfect. And as we see in our text today, life is hard. Life is short. But then please note that in Christ Jesus, life is enriching. Our text introduces us to a man named Job. He's perhaps epitomizes a life of suffering. And he had been truly blessed by God. He was called the greatest man of all the men of the East. He lived in what's now in northern Arabia. And God had blessed him with a family and a wife. He had seven sons and three daughters. He had all kinds of flocks and herds, sheep, cattle, goats, donkeys, and lots of servants. But then he was tested. Truly tested. And he lost everything. His, all his flocks and herds were either destroyed or stolen. His children were gathered together in a, in a house. And there was a storm and it collapsed on them. And they all died. Job himself was stricken with painful boils all over his body. His wife turned against him and left him. His friends came to visit him, visit him but they offered no comfort. They in fact blamed him. They said, you must have committed some terrible sin to cause God to bring this affliction upon you. So Job said life is hard. Hard service. He compares it here to being in the army. Um, like you're drafted in the army and really didn't plan on doing that, but it's there for you. You're a day laborer, a hired man um, who can't wait for the day to be over because work is drudgery. His life was drudgery. And it was miserable. He says, I've been a lot of months of futility. Nights of agony have been assigned to me. When I lie down, I think, how long before I get up? But the night drags on. And I'm filled with restlessness until dawn. Job was suffering in so many different ways. And it affected how he slept at night. He couldn't sleep. He tossed and he turned. Worrying about this, worrying about that. We may have trouble at times, too, sleeping at night. Worrying about this or that, tossing and turning. It's not unusual. And of course, if we suffer from insomnia, there's medication for that. But also a good remedy for restlessness is prayer. Some advise you to count sheep that'll help you sleep. But rather, I would say count your blessings. Review in your mind the many ways that God has blessed you and thank Him for that. Because that'll put your mind in a positive state. It'll help you relax. And then you'll sleep better. But Job suffered greatly in his body. He apparently had some loathsome form of leprosy. His joints were swollen and he had scabs and festering sores all over his body. It was very painful. He also apparently lost his appetite because a little later on he says, I'm nothing but skin and bones. In fact, he's in such bad shape that when his friends came to visit him, they had hardly recognized him. Life was hard for him. Now you saw a video tonight about a little boy in Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and his family, and how they had a deal with that affliction that struck him. You may suffer illness sometime. You may have an infirmity that comes your way. A tendency is when we get sick or are afflicted is to 
maybe blame God, or we'll certainly complain about it, and maybe even feel sorry for ourselves. But then think of Job. You will never have it as bad as he did. And think of the Lord. The Lord is watching over you. He's called the great physician of body and soul. You can turn to him in time of suffering. Instead of turning away from him, turn toward him in prayer. Pray to God for help and healing. In one of the Psalms, he invites us to do that. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I'll deliver you and you'll glorify me. As we sang in the hymn just now. Be still, my soul. The Lord is on your side. We need to recognize that God sometimes chastises his people. That he might allow hard times to come our way to teach us some valuable lesson. Uh, the Bible speaks about saying how the Lord disciplines his children. Again, to teach us a lesson, maybe to draw us closer to him, maybe to get our attention and pray to him more often, maybe to lean on him more for his support. But any act of discipline is, is done out of love, like a parent disciplining a child. It's an act of love, an act of part of training to, to make us better people. Job was going through that training. Now, he found not only that life is hard, but also he said it is short. He said here, my days pass by more swiftly than the shuttle of a weaver's loom. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is just a breath. My eyes will never again see good fortune. So you see, time was flying for Job, and he was not having fun. The days were passing by quickly. Saddened by his losses, tormented by his illness, goaded by his friends. He was degressing instead of progressing. He was filled with helplessness and hopelessness. And he thought, surely my days are drawing to a close soon. He figured he was staring death in the face, that his life was a breath, here today, gone tomorrow. What actually happened, though, Job recovered. He was restored both physically and spiritually. He then was blessed by God, that his health was renewed. He remarried. He had lots of children. The Lord blessed him with many flocks and herds of animals. Uh, life became good for him again. And he lived another 140 years. So the sad story is a happy ending. We all need to realize that life is short. Time tends to fly by. Maybe it goes faster than we'd like to see. And even though the mortality rate today is, has gotten higher and higher, longer and longer do people live, we still need to realize, as Job said, life is but a breath. We're only here in this world for a short time in comparison to eternity. It's either make the best of this time of grace well, we have the opportunity by serving God, by serving other people, by being kind and gracious and encouraging to others. And realize that, yes, there are sufferings that we may have to bear in this life, but they are short compared to the glory of heaven. In the Bible, Paul writes about that. He says, Consider that the sufferings of this life are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed into, in us in heaven. They are short-lived, those sufferings. 
It will be replaced by a life of glory in heaven that will never end. So we should never feel helpless or hopeless. Trust in Jesus Christ. Think of him. For him, life was short. He was 33 years old when he died. And life was hard. Nobody has ever suffered as much as he did, especially on the cross. But all of that was for you and for me. He satisfied God's justice. He paid the full penalty for our sins. He now forgives our sins. And he has made a reservation for us to join him someday in that wonderful world of heaven. So life in Christ is enriching. Now Job did come around. He never lost his faith. Although he wavered a bit. He did trust in the Lord. He recognized eventually that all those sufferings were part of God's chastening. And he did repent of his sins. He did fully trust God and God did bless him and restore him and strengthen him. And Job uttered those famous words that you might have recalled too. I know that my Redeemer lives. And he indicated that he would stand with him someday as my own eyes I will see him. I and not another, Job said. He believed in that Redeemer who was to come, the Christ. <laughs> believed that Redeemer would conquer sin and death. And yes, through the work of that Redeemer, he could stand before God today. His ravaged body would be glorified, and he would see God with his own eyes in heaven. He had a sure hope of that. It's the kind of hope you should have, based on that same Redeemer. Because that Redeemer, Redeemer who died on the cross did also rise from the dead to prove that he did conquer sin and death. That you then might have a new life, a life in Christ, a life that is meaningful and enriching. You have a bright future, the brightest of all futures life in heaven. And you talk about an enriching life. The glory, the bliss, the joy of heaven will be unmatched. But you can have joy already now through faith in Christ. A Brahmin convert to Christianity in India lost everything after he confessed his faith in Christ. In fact, not too long after he was baptized, all his possessions were taken away from him. His friends deserted him. Some of his own family turned against him. And when people would approach him and say, how can you stand up? How can you handle the, the burdens that, that you have to bear? And he said, many people ask me that. But no one ever asked me, how can you stand and bear the joys that you have. And he explained, I have an inner joy, an inner happiness, knowing that Christ died for me and I will live with him someday in heaven. And it's a joy that no one can take from me. Hopefully, tonight you'll learn a lesson from Job. When difficult times or negative things happen in your life, you can shrug that off and say, that's life. It's life in this sinful world. Not everything is going to go your way. But be still, my soul, the Lord is on your side. And know that in Christ Jesus, life is enriching, and enjoyable both now in this life and especially in the life to come.
Amen. We'll now sing the next hymn. When the, when in the hour of utmost need, and again we'll sing the first two verses. Sovereign of the 
I near the shore and the fearful breakers roar twixt me and the peaceful rest then while leaning on thy breast may I hear thee say to me fear not I will pilot thee. Thank you for worshiping with us this evening. As we lay the forward for Christ for February on the table there, the parish notes, be uh, sure to take that along with you. And stay warm. God's blessings the rest of the week.